I, I, I do have some presentation for you, but I was at a, 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 a smaller meeting the other day, and I did get some questions at the end of it. So with your liberty, what I'm just going to do is riff for a moment on, on the questions I got. I am with you. Uh, the precise wording on the police, Queen's Police Medal is to, to guard my people. Um, it is a fantastic statement of the police mission. It's one, as I would say to everyone, to die for. Some people do. Um, and it is such a huge mobilising thing. You know all these things where people do mission statements and all the stuff they stick on walls, beat that. Four words. It says it. It's always a good anchor point. Here's the bottom line. Here's why you are important. You know, just not the organisational spiel. I think you are important because it's the point where you are assuming this role. You're assuming it in the teeth of austerity, which I think is going to be not one CSO or all the predictions I see and all the conversations I'm having. It looks longer, much longer than that. Um, you're here at a time, too, when a digital age, when there's so many more opportunities for criminality in kids' bedrooms and wherever. Um, and <clears throat> you're here at a time when anybody who says anything is challenged. And I think that what I have worked with some fantastic police authorities, and I think that their work is unrecognised in reality for the, um, you know, the trials and tribulations and things they have borne. Um, but three parties have decided one way or another they're for this. And I think what can the democratic mandate bring, a very explicit one to this, one has to look for the absolutely the best things it can bring in this kind of challenged, you know, at every turn age, hard choices, Hugh, hopefully not tragic choices we have to make because of money and everything else. It, it can bring a mandate. It can bring a mandate. It brings some power you get to set the strategic direction. You get to decide the resource envelope within which the police work. This is pretty big stuff. And you get to choose the people, the men or women, who actually are the chief officers. This is quite a lot of things. Power. The power, I think, gives you, one, one, one looks for these acronyms and the rest of it, and I think we already had a few, but I, I'm gonna give you three Ps that I think have been a challenge that I've spoken to Hugh and others about for some time. The first is, I don't think the police mission is well explained. It is a very, very broad mission. You know, fire service is very powerful and important, but it's that. Uh, the ambulance is extremely important if you, you know, feel that pain in your chest. But the police mission stretches from neighborhoods to wherever, to potentially Afghanistan, not most of the time. But all of those things can play. It needs explaining. It's not well explained. And who hates this, like as the military and, and, and others are? It's probably because there's a lot in it. The second thing is, I do think it benefits from probing. I really do. I've been in the teeth of the Lawrence Inquiry, and it was a tough game. But you know what? It wouldn't all work perfectly, but it made the police service stronger. The way we deal with homicide, the way they deal with homicide now and other things, is hugely better. It was a painful, but maybe that probing doesn't have to happen in the teeth of public inquiries, because that's been the regular mechanism for changing the police. I bet maybe we need a, another one. And the final P, priorities. Someone has to set priorities, and I think it's been hard for the police to argue that they have taken everybody into account in deciding the priorities. So three Ps as to why you could add a lot of value. Right, a little bit. Um, a little bit about us, because it looks like whatever I was going to do is not loaded in the system. Um, I have got about 130 people um, around, uh, be split between, um, sorry those have heard this before, between Wakefield, Birmingham and London. Um, what can we help you with? I think we can help you with lots of things really. In essence, we do know a bit about the antecedents of police forces. We have been around them for some considerable time, uh, not since 1856, all of us, although it feels like that. 
Um, we have a lot of comparative data. Go on our website and you'll see it. Crime, antisocial behavior, cost, all, a lot of comparative data. Um, we can help shine a light on things. We try and do that in a constructive way, although sometimes we get a lot of feedback about it. We don't just shine a light, though, because there's not enough value in that for you. What we're trying to do is find a way of improving things um, and overcome the barriers. You know, whether it's things we reported on, antisocial behaviour out last week. On Monday, there'll be a report which may be of interest to you. It'll be about the second year of the Comprehensive Spending Review. And in it, we will pull together all the numbers about what's happening to the front line of policing and the rest, non-front line, what's happening in relation to the money, who's got a plan and who hasn't yet got a plan, and actually, critically importantly, what's happening to service. And there's going to be quite some good messages in there about how police authorities and police chief officers have got a grip of it and are cracking on. There is a big issue, though, which we will have to raise in there, and that issue is the sustainability of this if resources decrease. Because they operate, the police model at the moment, whilst it's been pruned, shaved a bit of the edge, slightly restructured, prioritised, at some point the model as it is will have to be re-looked at. It, just the sheer economics of it will drive people. Now some people have already jumped towards that, but where are they going to go next? And I can, I can see one or two chairs in the audience who are thinking, yes, well, I've already done that. Um, but, you know, it's the next transformation beyond where they've transformed already, basically. Because in the end, we have a responsibility to guard our people and make the very best of what we have. And then explain it. And hopefully, you guys can explain it in a convincing way. That's why you're so important. Um, we've got quite a lot of knowledge. We, we do advise about... Uh, about things, um, you know, about everything from executive search to you want a new Hugh Ward, well, perhaps not. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe we'd have to re engineer him slightly. Um, if you've got problems of misconduct, we <laughs> believe it or not are in about a quarter of feet police, police forces discussing scoping issues before we escalate them, and everybody gets wildly excited. Sometimes these things amount to nothing, but they can be very destructive if people just go straight into the press. And if the removal of chief officers, um, we are around to support on those issues. And we will be offering, we've got a website, we've got, uh, which is dedicated to PCCs. From the end of July, we will be offering meetings and um, on some organised basis, one-on-ones for all people who want to do it. Now, how are we going to cover it? God knows, but we're going to try and cover it because we want to make sure that the offer of advice and information and all the rest of it for people who are going to make very important decisions in the future and, and have thoughts about what they, you know, their election will be, that that advice is, or that information is available to all. We don't really want it to be just dropped off in one or two boxes. Um, one last thing I'm going to finish on that we're doing quite a lot of work on, which I think is relevant to you as candidates, and I think has always been relevant to police authorities and chief officers, and I would call it what works. When you have to make hard choices, whether you're the director of NCA, as the relatively young Keith Bristow is, Mr. Ord, um, or whether you're the police and crime commissioner, or even myself, what you have to do is you have to have an eye on what works. You have to ask them for the evidence about it. Um, now, work has been done over the last 20 or so years, and you'll have heard phrases like broken windows. You'll have heard phrases like Comstat, you know, the thing they use for accountability. You'll have heard things like cops on dots and neighbourhood policing. Now, all these things come with a sort of a background about whether they actually are true or false <coughs> or whether they've really got some legs underneath them in terms of what they do for our public. What I have looked around for and haven't been able to find is a readily accessible place where you can just go and get a quick overview on this damn stuff without being a totally nerdy 
you know, nuclear, I hope there's no nuclear physicists in the room, if I do, I apologize in advance, nuclear physicists to try and get beyond what the criminologists or someone's trying to tell you. Because there is a lot of bull around this stuff as well. And people sometimes feel things in the bath and then they think, ah, that's it, that must work. Well, maybe somebody else has thought about it before. Just possibly. Maybe they've looked at it. But what I've tried to find for you is a condensed three or four page version of frequently asked questions and answers. And you know what? I couldn't find it. So we've commissioned it. And by the end of July, it'll be available. And it will deal with those frequently asked questions about what works. And I think, Simon, that what might be useful, my suggestion to, uh, for would-be candidates would be um, material like that, which will be actually overseen by a board of the most eminent acad academics from this country, America and Australia, to try and pull that together. So at least you've got some of that information there. Even though the Daily Mail on the one hand or the Guardian on the other might want to give you hot tips about how to do stuff. Uh, and chief officers will know stuff as well. Um, but some chief officers are very well informed about these things and some, some have had you know, a different background. So I think what works matters for you. But I think there are a whole series of other briefings. Um, how does um, the whole funding thing work? And if anybody can explain it, please step up now. But um, how, now some police authorities kind of know this stuff already. But there's then the emerging new landscape. What is this professional body actually going to do? Um, what happens about senior appointments? How do they work? What sort of, what's the hinterland of these people? I think a series of briefings and the briefings about organised crime, and I'm glad Keith's here today, and the rest of it, will be a useful background material. Um, and we will contribute in any way we can to that. Um, I think there is a movement in the landscape, and Hugh is right. This is very, very big in the British policing landscape. It is admired across the world, really is, but I know that. In, you know, in the last few weeks we've had, believe it or not, the Chinese, people from Egypt, South America, who come, and, and we're not that popular. Uh, you can imagine, you know, some people, as I've said elsewhere, see us as a version of Voldemort. But they do come. They're very attracted to this British model. With all of its imperfections, but because of what it strives to do, to guard my people in a democratic way. Now the democratic way is underlined as potentially you guys. Time for questions, I think.